All right, nerd friends, and welcome back to the Nerd Bench. Another session with the Tunalizer. Today, we are going to compare two just stock 21.5 turn motors. There you have it, a shiny new 21.5 just stock G 2.1 fixed timing motor. These are very popular around the country for various handout or uh, spec class racing, if you will, where they dictate what motor particularly you need to run. And just stocks are very consistent, so people love them. Um, the rotor is marked with the correct, I guess, part number, you'd say, so that you know everything is in with, within spec. Makes it easy on the local racetracks for all that fun stuff. So, so jump right into it. The Tunalizer is a device that Hobbywing came out with several months ago. This is a tune analyzer. It can analyze the tune of your motor. It'll tell you various, I guess, details you'd say on the motor output, uh, sensor information, RPM. We're going to get all into all of that here in just a second. But it'll run from a two cell or a four cell lipo. It does a one cell or a two cell voltage output. So I'm gonna hook it up to a two cell battery here. And we do all of the testing for these motors in this, I guess you'd say series at the one cell test voltage, just to keep the RPMs a little bit lower. There are a few other things that the Tunalizer does. We'll get into that here in just a second, but you have your auto motor test where it ramps the motor up and down, gives you some information that way. You have a manual motor test where you can rev it up and down and look at the different outputs. And then it has a throttle output. So you can actually plug a speed control output wire or input harness, I guess you'd say, over here and use this like a uh, throttle so you can do uh, speed control testing as well. And then inside the settings here, you have obviously language, the brightness for the display, which is a very nice touch display. You can set the poles of the motor. So if you do different types of motors, you can set the, the different poles that you can test that. And then that applies for the for the sensorless motors as well. This will do sensorless motors. Um, we get us all the time to do brush motors. It does not do brush motors, unfortunately. Uh, test voltage, and you see you have your two different test voltages here, 3.4 or 7.4 volts. And this will take from a two cell up to a four cell input. So you can get very consistent you know, testing if you're gonna do a bunch of motors and stuff like that. Um, the other question that we asked, does this have Bluetooth printing? I'll say not yet. I did ask the engineers if we can get Bluetooth printing added in. They didn't say no, so that's a feature that we may be able to add in um, later on. What this is also good for, uh, if you work on adjustable timing motors that have unbells that are adjustable, you can turn the unbell timing up or down, change rotors, things like that. And this guy lets you see what it does, the actual current draw of the motor, RPM, and uh, have a point of reference for what your tune is doing on your motor. Another simple thing that it can do is just compare two motors and see if you have two identical motors, which one's going to be better or which one makes more RPM, which one draws more current. Just give you some baselines to look at and get an idea of what those numbers mean for your application. It's hard to always say like what numbers are the best. We get asked kind of all the time, what numbers should I be looking for? And it kind of depends. There's, there's a little bit of variance that's going to happen with all that. And as you see, there's a brand new motor so you just hook up the wires correctly abc there the, these are also marked abc so i try to keep the blue yellow and then third color it usually is orange but for this so with the motor wires connected correctly you hit auto motor test and it runs the motor different rpms so i can get some different information i like to keep a hand on the motor so it doesn't wiggle around and wires don't move and then I have it set up on the one cell test voltage, so it tests at 3.4 volts, and you see your current from the test, so the amp draw, the KV of the motor, which is your RPM, the what the electronic measured timing is, and then the fun stuff, your A, B, and C sensors measurements as well, so you can see there's a little bit of variance there, and then you can go... Go down to the second screen. See your end bell deviation. That's the difference in all three sensors. Does the math for you. Rotor asymmetry, which is how equally charged the rotor is. And the hall signal deviation. That's the strength of the, the sensors themselves. How consistent that strength reading is. And then, of course, the temp uh, of the test from the sensor that's inside the motor. So it just gives you a point of reference on everything. I take all these numbers or I take these fun numbers and I plug those into a spreadsheet. We'll do that and I'll be right back. Right, and then same motor would just run a second test for the sake of science, I guess you'd say. And all the other motor tests and comparisons we've done, we run each of the motors twice, log the data, and then we look at the spreadsheet. So do that again. See, nothing changes a whole lot. There is a small bit of variance as you would expect, like as these are alligator clips 
and temperature changes just a little bit. So you do get a little bit of change there, but uh, we're gonna go put these in the spreadsheet and be right back. So I marked this, mark this one motor number one. This guy will be motor number two. I guess two dots. Motor number one is one dot. Motor number two can be two dots. And with the motor wires connected correctly, hit the auto test and away it goes. All right, so this one, pr pretty similar. Timing's about the same. Current draw, RPM is very similar. So these guys are gonna be, I don't know, pretty close to the, the same, I'm gonna guess once we get the numbers plugged in here, but I'll be right back. Right, to the so this is still motor number two. Run the auto test again. Motor two, test two. Now, typically these tests have been pretty darn close together for the most part, back to back. and. I don't see a ton of variance, but sometimes you catch a little bit. You see they're pretty darn close. I'm gonna go plug these in the spreadsheet and then let's So talk. here's the data plugged into the super sweet spreadsheet. Um, I put out all the test information in there just to keep the same name on the motor over here. And this is just a basic spreadsheet that I built in any spreadsheet program. This is on the Mac, so it's in numbers. One thing that I do add is my KV per amp or what I call RPM per amp. You take the KV, and you divide it by the amperage to give you an RPM per amp number. And it's a very loose guide to see at a glance which motor makes more RPM for the given amp draw. Now, the, the times that that works okay is if the RPM is the same and the motors are in very similar condition because you could have two motors that have very different strengths of rotors and you could get a different RPM per amp number that's not super direct. I asked the engineer about this because I wanted to have it like, would you, does this mean anything? And for me, it's always been like just a general guide, so to speak, or a rule of thumb. But um, it's, it's, it's something that I add into my super sweet sh spreadsheet here just to give me a quick at a glance what's going on. And it stays kind of consistent with the motors that I want to run because you look at the comparison of these two guys here, and uh, the the first run on the first motor had uh, 2,600 and, or 2,066 RPM. The second run was 1,910, and then the second motor, both of the runs were pretty consistent. So I ran the first motor again just to make sure, and it was like 1,913 RPM. So it, it the first run was I don't know maybe a fluke of some sort. I'm not really sure why it was so much higher, um, but that little bit of difference kind of skewed it. And you can see that with that RPM increase, it also had an amp draw increase, so it wasn't free. And this guy, your amp draws were both very similar, RPMs were similar and higher on both regards. So lower amp draw, higher RPM is generally gonna be a little bit better. And these numbers down here, your deviation, your asymmetry and your hall signal deviation, always the lower those numbers are, the better off you are. So you can see that slight advantage going to motor number two and coming out overall with a better motor. I'm not exactly sure why the temperature of the motors were different. I think there's a little bit of variance in the, the temp sensors in the motor, how that all works. But there was a, the lower temperature motor should perform better. And in this case, it did. So I'm going to go back and run these motors some more and see if that temperature change uh, has any effect on it. But for the sake of the video, this is the quick uh, at a glance, if you were, at these two motors. If I was sitting at the racetrack running these two, I might try to equalize those two temperatures a little bit more j just for the sake of sanity, see if it makes any difference. Um, it's one of the things that I run into at the, the bigger races, uh, like Scotty's races where they do spec class racing. They actually equalize the temperature of the motors before they do the tech inspection. So I think that's, you know, obviously why they do that. You do get some variances here and that can make or break stuff. The other thing to talk about, I guess you'd say, is that little bit of timing advance that you're going to see that one degree that's it's higher one one and a half degrees higher is going to account for a little higher rpm and a little more amp draw but in the same regard sometimes it's not going to see a huge um rpm increase but it's going to see some amp draw increase so this motor might actually make better torque but you won't really know stuff like that until you run them in the car but at a glance i'd still pick motor number two um, mainly because all these symmetry and deviation numbers are a little bit lower and the my my magic rpm per amp number is a little bit higher too so well there you have it folks a quick comparison of two just stock 21.5s to pick which one is better and in this situation motor number two gonna be just that little bit better and sometimes if you're splitting hairs that can make all the difference in the world so but in addition to the motor testing this guy also has not like we said the speed control testing but also has bluetooth built in and it does all the things that the ota does so you can use this in conjunction with the hw link v2 to go speed control tuning uh, 
on your EZ or XE run series of speed controls. Um, it also actually works with the Max series. So the Max, anything that works with an OTA, basically, you could use with its tunalizer. And as we mentioned, it does also work with sensorless motors. You just don't get all of that awesome information. It just gives you the RPM and the amp draw, um, not all that other cool stuff, because there's no sensors for it to read or any uh, reference points for it to get the deviations. As always, folks, if you do have any questions, feel free to shoot us an email, northamerica at hobbywing.com. We do have a podcast. Uh, we do it the first and third Friday each and every month. You can look it up on your favorite podcast service. It's called RC Stuff, powered by Hobbywing. We give away a free Hobbywing system each and every episode. All you have to do to find out how to win is tune into an episode. And as always, folks, thanks for tuning in to another edition of The Charlie Show right here on the Hobbywing official YouTube channel. We will see you all next time. Thanks a lot.